And to paraphrase Keith Richard, I'm happy to be anywhere. <laughs> I'm going to keep it pretty brief, but there's one thing I do want to start off with, and I hope I speak for all of us here, is to express our thanks and gratitude to the entire Dad and Transplant team. Everyone from Dr. Bob. the surgeons, the coordinators, the nurses, the administrative staff. I don't know how they do it, but they have the knack. You can tell how busy they are just looking around the room here. They always had the ability to make me feel like I was their most important patient. And I hope you all had the same feeling you got from them too. The first time I arrived at Christ Hospital, I arrived by helicopter. I had that lovely little ICD device that we're so familiar with, fired off 243 times that day. The last words I remember as they voted me on the helicopter at Silver Cross Hospital was, hurry up, I don't think he's got 10 minutes. That was four years ago. So it's a lot more than 10 minutes. to people about the experience. I talk about all the doctor stories and hospital stories, but I'm kind of preaching to the choir if I do that here. Because we've all had our stories, we've all had our experiences. But maybe I'll take a little walk on memory lane and see if any of these things ring a bell. Do you remember the first time you were diagnosed with end-stage congestive heart failure? And it felt like a death sentence? When you made the agreements to get the van, have that implanted, and had to deal with the constant weirdness of having a machine inside you, keeping you alive. Other things came with the bed. The ceremony of the scrubbing of the line. And I can recall to this day my wife dressing up in that pretty little paper gown. And she was actually quite a good little scrubber too. I'd recommend it to anyone who has any assistance in it. Being placed on the transplant list. The weight. Jumping out of your skin every time the phone rang. The day of the transplant, preparing for it. Wondering what was going to happen. Wondering if you were going to come out on the other side. Wondering what life was going to be like when you did. Surviving it, coming through, waking up, and spending weeks, and for some of us months, up there in Asia, looking through that glass window, watching the world pass by. Looking forward to getting a CAT scan because it meant you got to get out of the room. Yeah. Finally leaving the hospital with your mask and your gloves. And going through the germophobia stage that we all do. Afraid to touch anybody or talk to anyone. The delightful culinary experience of taking 18 pills for breakfast every morning. Yeah. Now, I, I can go on and on with these things. We all have our own stories. They're all there's commonalities to the thing, but they're all very, very different. But I'll tell you one thing that all of us have in common. We all woke up this morning. Amen. We've all been given a precious, priceless gift. Some of us are religious, some of us maybe not so much. Whether you believe that you're the recipient of a miracle or you're just the luckiest person on earth, we've received something very, very special. A gift that many other people don't receive. I can't help believe that we're all here for a purpose. There's a reason for all this. We were saved for some reason. We've been given a gift, a very, very powerful gift. And I feel that it's incumbent upon us to give something back. Uh, there's an old adage, one that I've always agreed upon. From those to whom much is given, much is expected. And much has been given to us, given that special, precious gift. So I'd like to do is leave you with a thought. Something to reflect upon. Something where here our stories all separate because they come, become very unique and very, very personal. What are those gifts that you yet have to give? And I don't mean the wrapped up presents underneath the Christmas tree. I think we're talking about something larger than that, something bigger than that. We've been put here for that purpose. There's something you have to give. What is it? Look inside yourself. Who do you give these things to? Spouse? Kids? Grandkids? Maybe even somebody you haven't met yet. 
So even with that thought, in the season of giving, think about what we have to give in return. We receive this great gift over here and give it back to the rest of the world. With that, let's enjoy this evening and the holiday season. We look forward to seeing you all again next year and year after that and many years after that. Thank you.